So you wanna make a Discord community. Awesome. I've got a few Discord communities myself, and I try to stay up to date with all the newest community-based features that Discord has. With that, I add them to my existing communities, and it helps when starting a new community. So let's go ahead and jump right on into how you can create your very own Discord community in 2023 and set it up for success. The goal of this video is when it is finished, you will be able to have a thousand people join your server and not have to worry about it. It will be good to go, except maybe you might need to get a few moderators, but that's par for the course. So let's go ahead and switch on over into Discord here. And first things first, we need to go ahead and create a new server, right? So this is the Breakdowns Private Discord server. You can check that out at the join button under the video below if you want to join it. But let's go over here to the left, click on the plus add server here, and we want to create my own server. This is obviously for a club or community. It's a community server after all. You can upload an image here. I'm not going to upload one. It's not required, but uh, yeah, let's go ahead and then name this our tutorial community server, right like so, and then click create. And then it's going to create our brand new server up here at the top. As you can see, TCS tutorial community server. Now, before we create any channels, we're actually going to do that later. That's the easy part of running a community Discord server. We want to jump into settings. So let's go ahead and jump into our server settings here. And then first things first, we actually want to come down here to this community tab and click on enable community. So once we're in this, we want to go ahead and click get started and then kind of go through this whole entire thing. So verification required email. We're gonna actually up this later. I'd recommend doing that, but that is what's required. And guess what? Discord's gonna change that automatically for us. Same thing with our explicit media content filter. We need to scan all media from all members all the time. And that does exclude age, restri age restricted channels, just so you know, but nevertheless, scan all media there. Next, and then we're gonna go through here and create both of these. Just have Discord create these channels for you. Community Discord servers have to have a rules channel, so it's gonna create one, as well as a community updates channel. Now this is different from an announcements channel. This is how Discord is gonna communicate to you as a moderator. So you don't want to make this channel public. Discord will make this private by default if you have them create one. Let's go ahead and click next here. And then last but not least, default notifications to mentions only. That means if you're not mentioned, you won't be notified. At first, I could see why you might want to leave this off as your community is growing, you want to interact more, but once you get thousands of messages coming through every day, you have to basically turn this on. Remove moderation permissions from everyone. Yes, I would do that no matter what. And then I agree and understand after reading the community guidelines. Discord's community guidelines are actually super easy to understand and you should go read those. Literally, it probably won't take you more than five minutes and you must comply with them as a community Discord server owner. So it's very important that you go read those and understand them. Click finish setup and boom, that's gonna unlock a few different things for us in the Discord server settings back end here that we didn't have before when we weren't a community server. Now to get things started, we're actually gonna finish off our community settings here. And then after we do that, we're gonna go back and go through the rest of the Discord settings. Yes, with a community server, you kinda need to go through everything in these back end settings because your server is public. So you wanna make sure you've got everything up and running. Now, luckily it does give you a you know community kind of get started guide up here at the top, but we're gonna close out of that. That's what this is for. So for your rules channel, this should automatically be selected as the one that was created for your community updates. That should already be selected as well. And you probably want to select your server language here. For us, that's going to be English, but you can select any of the languages on this list. For your server description, you need to go ahead and enter one. So let's go ahead and enter in a server description. And then after you've added in your description, make sure that you do save changes. If you don't save changes, it's not going to work. From there, we can move on down to the server insights. Now, right now you don't have anything in your server insights, but once you do, right, once you do have the server insights available, you'll be able to see your weekly visitors and communicators, as well as your new members and member retention for the past week. So that's all there. You can click go to server insights and it will give you some of the information now, but it'll be available right here in Discord whenever you do meet the, you know, kind of requirements to see it. I don't know exactly what those are, but once you do, you'll be good to go. For the partner program, this is something that can be great if you do qualify. Now, for this specific server, we don't. You can see what you need to qualify for it here. Usually that means just growing your server over time and you will qualify for this. Discovery, same thing here. Once you grow your server to a certain level, you can add it to Discovery, which is something I'd recommend doing because it's a great way to grow your Discord server without having to market it outside of Discord, which is great. Last but not least, we do have access to the welcome screen and this is very important to set up. So let's go ahead and click up the setup welcome screen now. Now this is is the channel that basically is going to be first listed on your welcome screen where you want people to go. For us, it's going to make that rules because, well, that's important. And this is where you view the server rules. You can also choose an emoji for this. So let's go ahead and do that really fast. There we go. We can select the scroll and then click save. And you can kind of see what this looks like now by clicking on preview here and it pulls up. Unfortunately, it seems to be 
broken. Uh, and it's not actually previewing correctly. But it kind of looks like this. It says view the server rules and has rules here. You can also enter in some stuff about your server that will appear on that. So for example, we can enter in. This is a tutorial server for our video on making a community server. And whatever you put here will show up in this preview right under the welcome message. I wish that was pulling up. I do apologize that it's not. It seems to be a Discord issue. You can add other channels to this, so you might want to go ahead and add in your general channel as well. And you can always come back later to add in more channels, but again, I think it's more important to actually jump directly into getting the server settings set up and then adding channels later. So this is where you can talk about anything. And then we can quickly choose a chat bubble style emoji here. So I think is it, what is the, uh, let's see, thought bubble? There we go, Thought Bubble, and then save. So now I wish again this was showing up, but you can kind of see it there for a second. Maybe if we're very quick about it, we could pause the video there on this for just one second so you can kind of see what it does. But it shows the server rules, and that's what people will see when they first join your server there. And once we enable later on the rule screening, that will show, then this will show. So it's kind of like part of a flow there. But nevertheless, we can now move on back to the overview tab here at the top. And this is where you can change kind of the basic overall information about your server. For example, if you wanted to upload an icon, you can do that here. Change your server name entirely. You can do that here as well. The inactivity channel, if someone is inactive in a voice chat for a certain amount of time, they'll be moved here. I have never set this up on my Discord servers, but if you wanted to, you could go create a voice channel for that and set it up to automatically do that. Now for system channel messages, this is a welcome message that Discord sends automatically, as well as when someone boosts your server, and you'll also get helpful tips for server setup here, as well as the server owner. However, I would recommend just turning these to moderator only on public servers. If you have hundreds of people joining your server a day, it gets very overwhelming, especially if this is going to a text channel, like a general chat channel, it just gets overwhelming. So by keeping these private and using this moderator only channel, you'll be able to see everyone who comes and goes. You'll be able to see when people boost the server. And then you can go make them feel super special by doing an announcement or something like that. They boosted the server, but it's not spamming everyone when someone joins. You can also turn these off specifically if you want, but I would actually recommend leaving this on. Maybe you can see when users join. It's kind of cool. Nevertheless, let's go ahead and move on to the next spot, which we changed this when we set up our community server. It's our default notifications. I'd recommend leaving this on only mentions, especially for a public server. And then last but not least, do you want the server boost bar to show? And I'll show you this later on, but it just shows right up here in the top left of your server, and it shows how many boosts you have. If you want to get boosts, it's a great way to do that. I've actually seen it be effective in getting boost, so you can turn that on if you one. And then you can also see the other stuff that you unlock, for example, server banner and server invite background with server boost. Boosting is something your community can do for you to unlock more server features on your Discord. From there, we can move on to roles. This is a huge part of a community server. Roles are something you must configure in order for your server to work properly. So let's go ahead and set up three roles to basically do that. The default at everyone role that every single server has no matter what. We're also going to set up two more roles. One is like a VIP role. Let's say someone is a premium member of your community. For whatever reason, you can upgrade them to the VIP role. And then we're also going to set up an owner role as well for you to be able to have a owner role as the owner of the Discord server. We'll also set up a moderator role. So we'll do all of those here. But first, let's configure the default permissions, which is right here. And for the most part, Discord does a very good job at just setting these up correctly for community servers when you enable the community option down here. However, there are a few things worth noting, specifically the create invite. Do you want everyone in your server to create an invite or not? Most likely you do, but if you don't, you can turn that off there. There's also threads. Some people love threads. Some people want to disable them altogether. And if you're one of those people that wants to disable them altogether, you can do that. For example, what if you don't want private threads? Well, in that case, you could just disable the private threads and allow the public ones. Make sure you're saving changes along the way, by the way. The same can be said for links and files. Do you want everyone to be able to add links and files or not? You can disable those right there. Now, there are also various different voice channel commands that you may want to look at. For example, do you want people to be able to use the voice activity or not? Do you want to make sure they have to do push to talk? That is your choice, and you can turn that on and off there, as well as activities and other stuff with voice. But overall, Discord is a very good job at setting these up by default to where it can be public allowing for you less mistakes. Now, if we go ahead and come back here to our roles channel by clicking settings and roles, or sorry, not roles channel, role settings, we can create a role. So let's go ahead and do that. 
to start off, the owner role is the easiest role to create because you kind of just check everything. So let's go ahead and make this owner role yellow. And then you can choose custom colors, by the way, if you want to, by clicking right here. And you can literally click any kind of color you want, right? Then we can choose a role icon if we are a level two server. We're not. So at this point, we can display this separately from members on the right hand side. And then we can allow people to at mention this role. Now, if you don't want people to mention you as the owner using the owner role, you can turn this off. They can still mention you using your username, but not with this role. I kind of want that on though. Nevertheless, we can click save changes and then we can go into permissions. And like I said, the easiest thing about an owner role is that you want to have everything. So you can come down here to the bottom and click on administration. And so you can see this is dangerous, but that's okay because you want people to have everything if they're their owner. As a redundancy, and it's not really required, but as a redundancy, I like to come through and check everything else on the owner role as well. That way they truly do have every single command, every single thing that could possibly be there is there as far as the owner role goes, which makes a lot of sense because as the owner, you want to be able to do absolutely everything everything. Once you finish this up, we of course want to save. Let's go ahead and create a new role up here on the top left, kind of center of the screen. Click on this plus and then we can create a brand new role by clicking create role. This one's going to be called moderator because, uh, well, of course it is. And then we're going to make this one a, let's see, a gray. Why not? And then you can choose an image if you're a level two server. But if you're not, no worries. We want to display this separately and we want to allow people to mention them. Now, one of the cool things about this is we can click view server as role. So if we click this. This is what moderators see on the server. What's key about this is we want them to be able to see the moderator only channel. Right now they can't. We're gonna fix that later, but for right now, how would I set up a moderator role? Well, one of the things I wouldn't do is come in here to permissions and click on the administrator. You don't wanna give this to anyone except the owners of the server, because otherwise it can cause some issues. However, some things I would give a moderator is I might allow them to manage roles. Let's say I wanted them to allow members to create new roles, edit or delete existing ones. I'm okay with that. So let's go ahead and allow that. We can allow them to manage emojis and stickers, and we can allow them to view the audit log, which we'll go over later. It's not allowed them to view the server insights or manage the server because that would allow them to add bots to the server. Bots are something that we won't even touch on here because I don't think they're required for community servers anymore. I know that's controversial, but it is still one of those things. I don't think it's necessarily required, so we're not going to touch on it. And because of that, we don't want anyone except someone with owner privileges to be able to add them. However, managed nicknames can be important. Let's say someone joins your server, has an inappropriate nickname, they need to change that and that allows them to do that. Kick members and ban members, same thing. For a moderator, should probably be able to do those as well as time out. In text channels, do we want them to be able to create private threads? Maybe moderators can create private threads just for staff. That makes sense to me. Then we can scroll down as well. And do we want them to be able to mention out everyone? Maybe, maybe we do, maybe we don't. I don't, but I do want them to be able to manage messages and threads, allowing them to delete those. And that's an important thing. Text to speech. No one needs text to speech, <laughs> truthfully. And then priority speaker, that's up to you. I will recommend leaving that off. Um, it, it's it's something that usually, unless you're an owner permission or really need to settle a situation, that it's important. But we're going to allow them to mute and deafen members, which means if they really want to talk and someone's talking over them, they can just mute them, right? And then you're good. We also can allow them to move members between voice channels. If someone's really being a problem, we can move them to a separate one, as well as manage events. And there we go. That's everything that we want to give our moderators. Now, you can configure this however you want, but this is a basic setup that's going to work best for most servers. The only thing I could see that you might want to turn off is manage roles and manage emoji and stickers. Some people will want to give those to moderators. I like to though. Nevertheless, let's go ahead and create a brand new role. We accidentally created this one. Let's delete that one real fast. There we go. Role is deleted. And now last but not least, we need to create a role that is for an upgraded member type. These are people who are premium members. So we're going to go ahead and do upgraded right? Like so, or we'll actually, we'll name this VIP. And then let's go ahead and make it blue because blue is my favorite color. Same thing here as everything else, except for permissions. We're just going to leave these default. This is going to mirror our everyone permissions. And that's what we want. These people shouldn't have more power to ban people or anything like that. They're just premium members of, commun of our community. Later on, what we're going to do is allow them to have access to a members only channel, right? So as far as default permissions, we only need these all the same. But what we don't want is later on, we want to give them access to that premium only channel. But nevertheless, we're done with our role settings now. They might be like, are we done with, with, with this backend? No, not at all. <laughs> like I said, you kind of have to go through everything here with a community server. And that's why this is such a long in-depth video. So for emojis, you can add emojis here custom to your server. Something I do on all of our community Discord servers because it's such a big deal, right? Such a huge idea, such a huge thing to be able to add in emojis here and be able to get them up and running and have custom stuff for your community. Same thing with stickers. I'd recommend adding this in as well. You get five free and then you can add in more as you get more servers. 
server boost. Same thing with emojis, actually. You unlock more emojis as you get more server boost. The widget is a great way to add your Discord to a website. So you can take and embed this with iframe on any website that you have control over and allows for iframe embed. This is a super good way to get people to your server. The hardest part of your community server once you get it set up is going to be getting people to your server. That's what the widget allows. And so you can enable it here and then paste it. Now, one of the things is I would recommend setting an invite channel to your rules because that is something that everyone needs to be able to see. There should be no denying that someone has solved rules on your server. Server template, if you want to use a server template, you can, but I'd kind of recommend against it, right? Because a server template isn't going to be you. And I would recommend for a community server, you want it to be you, you want it to be for your community, not copy and paste it from someone else's. We're going to give you some general stuff here, but we're also going to give you a ton of leeway to be able to go out and create your own. Custom invite link is something that you should set up as soon as you get level three, but uh, you're not boosted to level three yet. So we can just move on. Integrations. This is kind of bots in a way. So for example, you could integrate a YouTube channel if you wanted to integrate members only. We've done that for our premium membership at the join button down below. But nevertheless, that is what this is. And if you need this, basically a tutorial will tell you how to get to that for whatever you're trying to integrate. Now, app directory, this is what I was talking about with bots. There's all sorts of amazing bots that you can add and the app directory makes it super easy. It didn't used to be this easy, by the way. There used to be, have to add them from a website and all that stuff. But now it's super easy to add bots directly from the apps directory here. You can still add bots and third-party bots without the directory, and that's perfectly fine. Just make sure they're trusted and well used in the Discord community. I, though, don't believe you really need any bots. The only bots that I could see you needing these days, because moderation features are built in, we'll go over those here in one second. However, bots that allow you to automatically assign roles are really cool and really helpful. So that means, for example, if you had a Minecraft server and you want to be able to select whether they play on Skyblock or on Survival, you could set up a bot to do that. Also, if you have a support Discord and you have people coming in there wanting to get questions and have questions with help, you can set up a ticket service in Discord to wherever the button, they can create a new ticket channel just for them and be able to, you know, get help via that, which is very, very helpful. But nevertheless, Truthfully, there's no reason to add any bots by default. And as you have the specific niche use cases, you can add them in. Now let's go ahead and go back into server settings and continue on down to role screening. Luckily, this is the last big section we need to go through here, the moderation section. It's also super, super important. So first things first, we wanna set up membership screening. You might be like, what is this? Well, when someone joins your server, they will see this first. And this is something they have to do before they can talk on your server because it is the rules of your server. You want everyone to agree to the rules when they join. Now, one thing I'll mention is verification levels are low. I've never had good success running a server with this. Bots are so easy to email verify these days. I would recommend changing it to highest, which is going to be a verified phone number on their Discord account. For some people though, they won't like that. They won't like to have to register their phone number to Discord. And if you think your community is gonna be like that, then that's where you can set it to high, which means they have to be on the server for at least 10 minutes and be on Discord for at least five minutes before they can talk on your server for the first time. Nevertheless though, I'm gonna change this to highest. Now for description, this is basically a description about your server that new members will see when they first join. This is a little longer than the one on the welcome screen, so you can add in whatever you want here, but I'm just going to add in basically the same thing. Once you've added in that, you can go ahead and click get started to set up your rules. Now, what your rules are is kind of up to you. Every Discord server is different, and this is where you can go to other Discord servers and see what their rules are, and it's kind of okay to copy as long as you do agree with them, and you'll enforce the rules on your server as well. For us, though, we're just going to be, uh, be simple here. Just add in a few easy rules that are pretty easy to follow, but also kind of cover everything. Now with those four rules, I honestly wouldn't necessarily run a public server with this loose of rules. The more specific and the more stuff you can capture, the better usually. However, they also have some stuff that, um, well, how do I put this, is easy to click. So if you wanted to add this in, you can add these and it will do that right away just to keep things, you know, overall in line with what Discord actually wants to see out of community servers. But you can go ahead and click save there. You've got all your rules and the people will have to agree to the rules whenever they join. You can preview this by clicking preview. And this is what people will see when they first join and then they can click agree, click submit, and then the welcome screen will come up as well. So nevertheless, let's go ahead and enable that. Super helpful thing. And it's very, very hard for someone to say they never saw the rules when they have to go through this when they join your server. Now for safety setup, 
Verification level, we've already confirmed. We've done the highest. You can do whatever you want, but for a community server, you at least have to have it to low. For explicit media content filter, again, for a community server, you have to have this scan everything. Now, the last but not least, you must enable the 2FA requirement. You've got to. It is going to protect your server so much. This means anyone with administrative permissions on your server will have to have 2FA enabled. That means if, for whatever reason, their account gets hacked, they still have to have a 2FA in order to access that account and thus delete your server and do all sorts of stuff. So nevertheless, let's go ahead and enable this real fast. When you click enable, it's going to give you this kind of a prompt here where we will then need to go in 2FA. Let me do that and I'll meet you once I've clicked this enable 2FA requirement. There we go with 2FA enabled. As you can see, enable has changed to disable. We are now good to go from safety setup. Basically, all of this is mostly required, right? You have to at least have low here. This is required, and I believe 2FA and honestly should be required, and it is for some of this, uh, you know, for example, I think Discovery requires 2FA. Yes, 2FA is required for Discovery, and now you're good to go with that. But nevertheless, moving on from there, let's go to Auto Mod. And this is why you no longer need a bot in order to moderate on your Discord server. Now, I would recommend getting moderators on your server. That's why we created that moderator role. But... This is what is going to allow you to have some auto moderation built into Discord and not have to rely on bots. That's what this is. So let's go ahead and set every single one of these up, starting off with mention spam. So if we click setup, it's going to go ahead and open up. It should at least a dialogue. That's weird. There we go. It enabled. So I guess what we'll do is go through and enable all these, right like so. And then once we've done that, we can go through and edit them. So click setup and save changes on all of these. Custom keyword rule, we'll talk about that once we get to it. But nonetheless, for block mentioned spam here, you can change whatever you want, but I actually usually do 10 here. I see no reason why someone needs to mention more than 10 people in one message. What do you do with the message? Do you block it? That's what I normally do. Do you timeout the user? That's up to you. You can also choose your timeout duration. But I'm going to go ahead and send an alert as well. Where am I going to send that to? The moderator only channel. I like to have records of everything that happens on my server in one channel as far as stuff like this goes. And that's why I do that. You can also set exemption. For example, where does this channel not affect? Well, it doesn't affect the moderator only channel. And you can also say, hey, if you are a owner or a moderator, you can mention as many people as you want. Go ahead and save that. And now we can move on to the content spam. Edit that rule. And if a message is suspected of being spammed, here's what happens. The message is blocked, and then we want to send that alert to the moderator-only channel. That way we can see what happens. Let's say nobody can spam. Even if you have the owner role, you can't spam on this server. So let's go ahead and, um, you know, not include that there. But it is worth noting that admin and managed server permissions are always excluded. So that means if you are an owner, you will be. But if you're a moderator, you can't spam here. Nevertheless, go ahead and click Save there. And then last but not least, the commonly flagged words. What words do you want to have blocked on your server, right? For me, I want everything. I don't want any of this stuff coming through on the server. There is words you wanted to exempt. You could add those here, right? Let's say for whatever reason, there was a word that you didn't want to trigger these. You could add it here and be perfectly safe. But overall, I would recommend turning all of these on, right? Especially for community servers. You don't know who's going to join. And to be able to cut stuff like this off right away before they have a chance is best. You can then go through your alerts channel, see who is saying extremely heinous things, and ban them permanently. Again, we won't make anyone exempt from this either. Now, create a keyword rule. Basically, you can create a custom list of keywords that shouldn't be set on your server. I use this as a catch all, right? Basically a fail safe. If it's not here in the commonly flagged words, it's going to be in my list. Fortunately, I can't share that list for obvious reasons, but any heinous things you can think of, kind of put them in here. It sucks we have to do this, but it is something we do have to do. And then you can choose again what happens. Send alert, time the user out, so on and so forth, and get that set up. Finally, though, the automation is done. Now, there's a few other things we need to go through. One is audit log. This is everything that's been changed on your server. As you can see, we've been changing all sorts of stuff on our server here today, and it's all just changed down through here. Now, with that being said, let's say someone does gain access to a moderator account. They can't delete the server because we didn't set up our permissions for that, but they can come in here and they can change the roles and they mess all sorts of stuff up. Well, that's where this comes in handy. You can see what happened, what they changed, what they did. All of it is here. You can change the permissions and see what the permissions were changed. So you can go back and change those back to how they were very, very helpful and a great way to see what's happening on your server as far as moderating and the back end stuff goes. Bans is where anyone in your server who is banned will show. As far as what happens when they're here, well, you can click on them and then be able to see the reason they were banned 
and be able to unban them as well. So if a user is here, you can click on them, you'll see the reason they were banned, and you can unban them. Last but not least, down here we have premium monetization. I've not done anything with this, but it's a way that you can access and basically give exclusive rewards to someone on your server. This server doesn't qualify for that, as you can see, but once you do, you can activate that. Server boost status. This is where you can see how many boosts your server has, what status you're on, all of that stuff. As you can see, Nitro gives you free boost, and people can boost servers directly at $4.99. Last but not least, we do have our members. This is where all the members on your server are going to be located. You can see everyone here. You can filter by role, all of that stuff. Invites. Any invite links that your server has can be found here. You can pause all invites. You can delete and manage invites here as well. Everyone, we are finally complete. We can move back to the server itself. Truthfully though, that was the hard part of creating a community Discord server. Everything else is relatively simple when it comes to getting the text channels and the voice channels and categories and everything set up, but let's go ahead and do that. Let's create our server. So we already have this rules channel up here at the top. That has to stay there. So let's go ahead and create a new channel here. And we're actually gonna make this an announcements channel. This is where people are gonna be able to see what's happening on your server. We're gonna name this announcements and click create. So now we have a new announcements channel. It's right up here at the top. I'd recommend moving it right under rules. Some people might even want to put it above rules. It doesn't really matter. I think it looks better under them. Then let's go ahead and create a new general category. We have this uh, text channels category. We're just going to rename that. So right click it, edit category, and we're going to name this to general. You can also use emojis in this, by the way. So you can go ahead and do like globe, I believe will work. You may have to copy and paste, but I know you can use emojis in here if you want. Yeah, you do. So let's go ahead and edit this and we'll use our windows key plus period to pull up our emoji editor here. And then we can search for the globe and add that in. Boom, save. And so you can have emojis to separate your categories. I think that looks best, but it's kind of up to you. And then we're going to go ahead and create our VIP only category. So we're going to name this VIP. You can make this a private category if you want. It's actually not a bad idea to do that. So let's go ahead and do that. We can select VIPs, have this membership, create category. That kind of set up our permissions very, very quickly. And uh, we're going to do that later on as well. In this, we want to go ahead and create a VIPs only channel. So VIPs only text channel. It's going to mirror, by the way, whatever your category permissions are. So that's helpful. And we're going to create a voice channel as well for VIP voice create channel. Now for this general voice channel, let's go ahead and move that back into general and delete this middle category right like so. And then last but not least, we're going to create a new category at the bottom where this is going to be a private category with only access to our staff. So this is our staff category and we only want moderators to have access to that. Boom. Now we can go ahead and move in that moderator only channel into the staff. Would you like to mirror these? Let's go ahead and sync those permissions. And there we go. So now what does this mean? What is the server set up like? Well, What's cool is we can come in here and see that pretty easily. So if we go back into those server settings, go into roles, we can see if we right click here and view as server that moderators have access to the moderator only staff channel. They also have access to general announcements and rules. One thing worth noting though, they can't post in the announcements channel. It's kind of cool, right? Now, what about the VIP role? Well, if we come up here to the top and we select VIP, remove moderator, we can see they don't have access to the staff section. They just have access to the VIP section here, as well as the general channel. What about general users? What about no ranks? Well, someone without any sort of role on your server can only see general. This was all set up by creating private channels versus public channels and selecting the appropriate roles. I will show you how to edit those, but at this point, your server is kind of set up, right? It's that simple. That's how easy it is to set up the front end of the server once the back end is set up correctly. That's why it's so important to get your role set up, get your community feature set up, get all that set up, and then the front end just comes together basically instantly. Now, if you did want to change this, let's say for whatever reason, you didn't want VIPs to have access to VIP voice. A little weird, I know, but if you right click on this specific channel, you can come in here and you can edit the channel. Then you can go into permissions and change specific permissions for this channel. So if we go in here to a VIP, for example, you can change that. Now if we come in here and scroll down, we can change these specifically. For example, if we didn't want them to view this channel, we could do that, save. And now if we go and view this as a VIP, they won't be able to see that channel we just set here. So if we go into roles and we view this as a VIP, they cannot see that voice channel because we made them not able to. A little weird, but still I could see different reasons that you might want to do that. Now if we go back into our server. We want to give that back to them. We can actually just come in here, click on this, click edit channel, and then we can just sync this with the category and it will give them access back to that. I personally on my servers do that with every single channel. 
all channels are category based. So if you have access to a category, you have access to all the channels in that category. And I edit all my permissions based on categories because that's just easier for me, right? It's just easier. As you can see, everyone, nobody, they can't view this channel. VIPs can view this channel. And let's say we want to allow VIPs to do something like uh, create private threads in this channel. We can do that there and they'll be able to do that. So nevertheless, that is how you can set up a community Discord server, do your permissions, all of that stuff. For example, though, these up here at the top do need to be configured directly. Discord's very good about the permissions by default. As you can see, everyone can view this channel, but what they can't do is send messages in this, right? So go ahead, turn off sending messages in that because we don't want them to be able to post in the rules channel. I'd also recommend adding your rules here so we can go ahead and quickly do that. Now, all the ones that Discord added into our rules pop up, I don't have, but I do have very quickly these right here that I can add in. Boom, there are our server rules. You can format this nice. You can do all sorts of stuff. For example, on the breakdown server, we do have our rules formatted pretty nicely, as you can see, right? So all the emojis and all that can be used, make it look good, but it's not required. This right here does work. So nonetheless, that's how you can set up your community Discord server. If you have any questions, let us know in the comments. And be sure to check out our private Discord server, as you can see in the description down below. Just click on that join link down below, and it will show you how you can access our private Discord server. And be sure to check out one of the videos on your screen right now, because YouTube thinks you'll like it. We'll see you in the next one.